This is the AccuCraft two-cylinder live steam Shea locomotive. It is an excellent running piece of equipment. AccuCraft provides a good owner's manual with operation and maintenance instructions and it's my primary reference. I provided a link to the manual below if you want to learn more about the locomotive. Let's take a tour of the cab and look at the layout of the controls. The cab roof slides open to give us access to the interior and you can see that all the equipment is very nicely arranged inside the cab. This is the fuel tank for the butane and here is the uh, fill port for the butane. This is the regulator valve that controls the flow of the butane down to the burner. On top of the T-boiler we have a fitting and that's where you can find the water fill port and there's a tap which goes to feed the pressure gauge and there's a connection for the throttle. If you follow the line from the throttle, the steam line runs down and through the displacement lubricator. And what that does is mix a little bit of oil in with the steam to help lubricate the internal parts of the locomotive. This is a direction control valve, which is used to control the direction of the locomotive. And it's connected to this direction control lever. Shea locomotives are driven by reduction gears which favor power over speed. This allows good direction control and speed control using just the reversing lever, with the burner and the throttle left at a nominal setting. I have a separate video on steam locomotive control strategy. I'll put a link in the text below. This locomotive uses butane as a fuel. This butane can is too big to fit into the cab and so a filler extension tube is needed to connect the can to the fuel tank. Some butane escapes in the fueling process and the evaporation causes the liquid in the fuel tank to get very cold. Warm butane flows and burns better. So I usually fill the tank first to give the fuel time to warm up before it's needed. The tank is full when the fuel spits out past the valve. Unscrew the filler plug and fill the boiler to the top with water. This is about 220 to 230 cc's on this particular locomotive. Be sure to use only distilled water. Tap water contains minerals that will leach out and ultimately affect the performance of the engine. With the boiler full, use a syringe to remove about 30 cc's to create a space above the water. This is necessary to give the steam a place to accumulate. <laughs> Don't forget to return the plug. There is an o-ring on the plug that makes the seal so snug is sufficient. If you over tighten it you can damage the o-ring. As steam passes through the displacement lubricator a small amount will condense and sink to the bottom displacing oil up into the steam line. The displacement lubricator cap has a built-in extension handle but it's still a bit fidgety to remove. The lubricator appears to be full of oil when in fact it is full of water with a small amount of oil remaining from the previous run floating on the surface. With the cap removed and the lower valve open, the water is drained out. Residual oil is too viscous to pass through the drain and remains in the lubricator. With the drain valve closed, the lubricator is filled with a specially formulated steam oil. It is viscous at room temperature, but thins adequately when exposed to the heat of the steam to provide proper lubrication inside the cylinders and valves. Once the lubricator is full, return the cap. This cap also uses an o-ring seal and should not be over tightened. To fire the locomotive, open the smoke box door. Crack open the gas valve about an eighth of a turn and ignite the gas escaping into the smoke box. The fire should flash back into the flue with a pop and burn back at the burner in a crescent shaped flame. The fire may gurgle and sputter due to liquid butane getting to the gas burner, so you may have to reignite it once or twice. After a couple of attempts, the gas should settle down and the fire should burn steadily. If it burns in a smoke box or in the forward part of the flue, slowly close the gas valve until it flashes back to the burner. Don't let the fire burn in the smoke box, your engine may be damaged. It'll take several minutes to raise the steam pressure I take advantage of this downtime to oil all the external moving parts of the engine with a high-grade, lightweight machine oil, like 3-in-1. Oil all parts of the drivetrain and the wheel bearings. Oil everything, but oil sparingly. Excessive oil 
will make a mess and attract dirt and grit to your moving parts. After a few minutes, when the pressure on the gauge reaches 40 psi, the engine can be run. Open the throttle and move the reversing lever to the forward position. The locomotive will move and stall. This is because the cylinders are cold, hot steam entering them will condense into water and will be exhausted into the smoke box. You will see water coming out of the bottom. Move the reversing lever back and forth a few times. This will help warm the cylinders and clear the condensate. After a few tries, the engine should run smoothly. With your locomotive wall warmed up and running smoothly, it's time to couple up to your train. I always like running live steam locomotives, but particularly the Shea, because the mechanism is fascinating. The way the crankshaft drives the gears that drive the wheels. Uh, and I find it particularly interesting when it goes around the curve. As the bogies rotate to follow the curvature and track, the drive shafts have to extend or contract as well as realign themselves so they can maintain the connection between the fixed bank of cylinders and the rotating bogies. The Shea locomotive is so controllable that I use it here to power my camera car when I'm doing a video of another AccuCraft live steam locomotive. This is a 440, the old western style, and uh, it too is a really fine locomotive. I recommend it highly. Well, if you like the video, share it with a friend, because sharing guarding railroading with friends is one of the high points in the hobby. Also, you might consider giving the video a like and maybe even subscribing to this channel. There are several other videos on this channel that address live steam train operations in the garden and DYI garden railroad projects that are inexpensive and fun. Thank you for watching.